Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition. Just over one minute into flight, Falcon 9 is passing through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We've vehicle is experiencing max Q. You've heard the call out. We're now experiencing maximum dynamic pressure where the velocity of the first stage and the density of the Earth's atmosphere combine to create the greatest loads on the rocket. We're through that period. Merlin engines have throttled back up to full power. Propulsion indicates nominal. Power and telemetry also reported nominal. Next major activity, just a little under a minute from now, we'll have the main engine cutoff, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage engine. T plus two minutes into flight, we've got about another half a minute left in the first stage burn. Trajectory looks good. We're going right down the middle of the track. We've got a great view from the ground looking up at the Merlin engine plume on the Falcon 9. Main engine cut off of the nine Merlin engines in about 10 seconds. Eco. Stage separation. Good recognition. Coming up on three minutes into flight, you hear the applause here from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. We've had a good first stage shutdown, a stage separation, and a good ignition of the upper stage engine. Right after ignition, you may have seen a couple of pieces of metal coming off the nozzle. That's normal. Those are stiffeners that go around the bottom of the nozzle for use in transporting on the ground. They fall off as we go into flight. Next. Bearing separation confirmed. Again, the applause, you saw a good payload fairing separation. The fairing separating into the two halves and falling away. We're coming up on four minutes into flight. GNC reports trajectory is good. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda, indicates that the Falcon 9 telemetry is also being acquired by our ground tracking station in Bermuda. Upper stage engine power continues to be constant. Thrust to the Merlin Vacuum D engine is good. We're coming up on T plus five minutes into flight, looking at the trajectory map. Falcon 9 continues to go right along the planned path, heading east from Cape Canaveral into the first of two orbits planned for this evening. Now currently, we're planning to burn that upper stage engine for just about another three and a half minutes. We may also hear call outs in a little more than a minute of entry burn. The first stage, as I mentioned, will go through the pre-programmed re-entry and landing sequence, but there's no drone ship station out in the stormy Atlantic to be able to catch the first stage. As a reminder, the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite, as Elon has tweeted out, is massing over six metric tons. That's over 6,000 kilograms, and that is the largest geostationary satellite 
We've ever flown. Given the size, is you. You heard entry burn start in the background here. As I mentioned, going through the pre-programmed sequence. Coming up on 4G's acceleration. Flight termination system on stage two is saved. Seco. We've got shutdown of the second stage engine. The completion of the first burn on time. Waiting to hear a call out. Good orbital insertion. And there it is. We've heard good orbital insertion of the second stage, still carrying the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite. We're into Eight the first orbit. Expected. We're going into a coast phase now. We'll wait until the orbit takes us over the equator on West Africa before we relight the upper stage engine, and that'll put us into the geostationary transfer orbit. We're just under 11 minutes after a great liftoff of Falcon 9 from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral. The first stage did its mission. Second stage has done the first of two planned burns. We're into the desired orbit. We're now in the coast phase, as I mentioned. As you can see from the animation, the orbit will take us over Western Africa. As we cross the equator, we'll relight the engine, transferring the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite into the desired geostationary transfer orbit. Now it's still several minutes before we get to that reignition, so we're going to stop live commentary right now. We'll come back live with the webcast at T plus 26 minutes, but we will leave you the animation so you can see how the second stage is orbiting around the Earth, coming up on the point for reignition. So with that, we'll pause now. We'll be back in just over 14 minutes at T plus 26 minutes. Bermuda loss of signal expected.
Welcome back to the live commentary of Falcon 9 flight with ISPASAT 30W6. We're just past, past T plus 26 minutes. The upper stage engine is chilled in and we're about to have the second of two planned burns of the upper stage engine. This one will transfer the ISPASAT satellite into the geostationary transfer orbit. We're getting contact through our Gabon trapping, tracking station in Africa and now we're waiting for ignition of the upper stage engine. MVAC ignition. And we've heard confirmation, MVAC ignition. This burn will last just about 50 seconds. Now this short second burn of the upper stage, while it's short, will increase the velocity by about 25%, at the same time will slightly lower the inclination of the orbit closer to the equator. We're now throttling down to keep G loads below 5 G's on the satellite. Burn continues to go well. We're coming up on shot. Seco. We've had Seco 2, second stage engine cut off. Now we're waiting to hear guidance. Confirm the orbit accurate. Payload insertion. And in the background over the uh, speaker, you might have heard we have a good insertion orbit for the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite. So that completes another major event in today's flight. The second stage is now coasting again. There's a view of the ISPASAT satellite with the sunlit portion of the Earth in the background. Now we've got several minutes before the actual deployment of the satellite, so we're going to suspend live commentary again. We'll be back in three and a half minutes at T plus 32 minutes to witness the ISPASAT satellite release. We're at T plus 32 minutes and five seconds. Falcon 9 second stage and satellite are in the desired geostationary transfer orbit. We've actually got a very accurate orbit that we achieved. Next up, we're gonna see satellite deployment. In this mode, the flight computer will send redundant commands to open the separation system that holds the satellite to the second stage. Small compressed springs will then push the satellite away from the second stage and that'll complete deployment. We're expecting that deployment coming up in about 15 seconds. Camera showing alternating views between the nozzle of the second stage engine, the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite on top of the second stage payloaded app. Spacecraft separation confirmed. And the cheering from the late night team here in Hawthorne. We have telemetry and video confirmation of the ISPASAT 30W6 satellite successfully separated from the Falcon 9. It's been a great mission for Falcon 9, our 50th Falcon 9 flight. Countdown was on time. We launched right at the opening of the window. First stage flight was normal. Second stage went through two burns. Both of them gave us good orbit insertion. And then finally, as you just saw, satellite deployment right on time. Nice view from the camera on top of the second stage. So that's going to end our webcast for this evening. We'd like to thank our customer, ISPASAT, for their confidence in SpaceX, the Eastern Range for their support, 
the Federal Aviation Administration, our commercial licensing agency, and of course you, the viewer, for clicking on the link to follow us. Now, if moving humanity out into the solar system appeals to you, please check SpaceX.com slash careers for openings at our factory and launch and test sites. Look for updates on our next Very mission good. on social platforms and our website. And with that, wish you a good night from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, United States of America, planet Earth.